So we'll try to define some basic terms that will help us to build up the subject. So this is the syllabus. You all have syllabus in that uh, Google uploaded, so you can have a look. So basically, we'll uh, let me get a pointer. Yeah. So basically, we'll briefly talk about what is macroscopic and microscopic approach. Then uh, this is a very important uh, part that we'll cover today: system and surrounding. So what is system? What is surrounding? This becomes very important when we go for other topics, advanced topics like first law, second law. So this has to be clear to everyone. If you have any doubt, please feel free to ask. Then we'll talk about uh, how to define a property. So this is these are basically these are the fundamental building blocks of the subject, and you need to be very clear in all of them to move further. If you have any doubt, feel free to ask, or you can email me later. But you should not have any doubt in uh, these uh, basic subject, basic topics. Okay. So we'll talk about uh, property, paths, and processes. Then we'll speak about uh, equilibrium. What is an equilibrium, and uh, what are the different types of equilibrium? Then we we'll look into quasi-static process and cycle. So this is the syllabus what we have for this particular subject, uh, particular uh, chapter. So let us start with the uh, description. So suppose uh, I have a configuration like this. So this is a piston cylinder arrangement basically i have a piston here uh, this is the piston and this is the cylinder so in this arrangement i am holding some gas so some amount of gas is being held within this in this piston cylinder arrangement now i can uh, basically transfer heat to the gas okay so i can uh, talk about what is the temperature of this system i can talk about what is the pressure what is the volume okay but i am talking about this system i am talking about all the gases contained and generally i will be talking in average i will say that what is the average temperature here what is the pressure here so i am not interested in what are the molecules how these molecules are moving so this is called macroscopic approach so when when i am looking at objects that are real world object that is the day to day life objects or the size is much larger than the molecular size for microscopic i will be talking about molecules that how they move what is the velocity distribution what is the number of density of these molecules if i talk in those terms then i am talking about microscopic but for this subject we will limit to macroscopic we'll talk about system level we'll not go into the detail of molecular level approach okay so this is this is what we are going to follow uh, for the subject at least macroscopic level of discussion second we need to uh, talk about system and surroundings so what is a system and how do we define that will discuss next so uh, this you have seen the last slide so this is a piston cylinder arrangement so can we call this as a system anyone please speak up yes sir yes. okay now what about this i take uh, any arbitrary volume in a room or in a pipe which is a system is this a system or this is a system both are so system both correct both are, both are systems okay so the shape you can take any arbitrary shape it is not necessary that you take a very very regular shape you can take any shape and that will be defined as a system so now let us uh, look at how we define so system could be uh, said to be a quantity of matter or a region of space okay whatever you choose for your study so you can select any arbitrary volume or any type of boundary but you need to be clear what what is the boundary that you have defined so whatever is inside that boundary that will be your system what is outside of that will be the surrounding so surrounding is the mass or region outside the system okay so this this has to be very clear this is my system this is the surrounding and in between we have this dotted line is your boundary so boundary is the surface that separates the system from its surrounding okay so basically 
what we are trying to do here is we'll identify this mass or this region in space i will say that this is the system and then whatever mass transfer heat transfer we need to talk about we'll talk in terms of this boundary that right? let us say i can say let me get a pen i can say some mass is entering the system okay this is not a good color okay i can say some mass is entering the system i can say some heat is leaving the system so whenever i talk about system i will talk in terms of boundary mass is coming through this boundary heat is leaving through this boundary okay so we we'll, this this will be clear when we move forward if you look at uh, more examples so let us uh, now define what are the different types of system okay so this we have already seen so this is a very typical example piston cylinder exam uh, uh, sorry piston cylinder arrangement is the most uh, common uh, configuration that you will encounter through the subject okay so as we go along in different chapters this is the most uh, easily accessible uh, example that you will see so this is uh, what is what we call a closed system or control mass because here we are not allowing any mass to escape or mass to enter into the system so the, we are holding this mass constant or under control so this is called control mass now let us uh, have a look for heat and mass transfer so what about heat transfer heat transfer can be done we can supply some heat to this cylinder while well, there could not be any mass transfer because this is a closed system that is how we define a closed system that there should not be any mass transfer from the closed system it means no mass could enter or leave this system we can have heat heat we can add or we can uh, extract heat but mass cannot this could be for heat okay but not for mass mass is held fixed so what is what could be the opposite end of this it could be open system so if i remove this piston it is just a cylinder so <clears throat> you contain some mass and any other mass could come in or go out so this is called open system or control volume okay so we'll see more examples what a control volume actually is and how we will use that in our analysis so again as would be obvious we can transfer both heat and mass for this open system anything is possible you can take out mass you can add mass you can add heat whatever you want you can do so this is a very open system now what about uh, the opposite end if we say i don't want any heat or mass transfer so that will call as insulated system okay so we have a closed system and then we add some insulation so that there is no heat transfer so this will have no heat transfer no mass transfer okay we just erase this so is this uh, clear to everyone what are the different types of system yes sir yes sir any anyone uh, having any questions this is a building block of a subject if any doubt uh, please ask now okay i assume uh, everyone is clear with this then uh, moving forward let us talk about type of boundaries so we have seen what are the different type of system now let us define some boundaries so for example this boundary will it be same as uh, these two these three boundaries or there is any difference it is actually a 3d uh picture it is a 3d object but we are putting it in 2d so let us say that these are this is a wall right this is near to a wall this is also near to a wall this is also a wall this piston is also a wall but this this is moving right this boundary is right now here if the piston comes down this boundary will be here right so there is a difference between boundaries this boundary is called moving boundary while well, this is these are these three are fixed boundary these boundaries are not moving right similarly when we talk about uh, this is a can anyone define what what system is this if i take this 
as a dotted line as a boundary so what system i'm talking about here open, open system. system yes correct open system so, yes so this is an open system or i can also say this is a control volume okay now let us see what what are the types of boundaries here so this on top we have real boundary because this is near the wall so we have a exact definition that near the wall i will take boundary which is real boundary now what about this this is arbitrary i can take it here i can take it anywhere else that depends on my convenience how you want to define the system how you want to analyze so these boundaries are called imaginary boundary because there is no wall here i have made a boundary based on my convenience how i want to analyze the system so top and bottom these are real boundaries and these are imaginary boundaries so these are the different uh, classification for boundaries moving on so as i mentioned this is a control volume or open system now in general i can use any arbitrary shape any arbitrary region in space that we can say that this is my control volume okay and there is no concrete rules there is no set uh, fixed rule that you can make it a square or a rectangle it could be anything any arbitrary shape okay but if you make a careful choice if you uh, do it properly then your analysis will be easier okay so for example in a room i can take a control volume like this also there is no rule that says it should be shaped like this and not like this both are equally correct theoretically both are allowed but if you have something like this it will make your analysis easier let me so that with some examples so this is one control volume which we say that it will make easier we could have other shapes i could define a control volume like this which could be covering half the span or i could also have an arbitrary shape so theoretically all these are correct you cannot say this is wrong or this is right all these are correct only but for the first case when we have we are covering the entire diameter that will be the easiest to analyze so generally as you uh, go along to later chapters you will see what what are the things that we need to look into so basically i will talk about how much mass is flowing how much heat has been taken out from this so for that as you can see this is the simplest one this is i am covering the whole diameter so it will be easier to analyze if i have a diameter shape like this or this it will be difficult to determine how much mass is crossing this boundary how much mass is going out from here how much heat is leaving from here that will be difficult but it is quite straight forward if you have a simple control volume okay so this comes through practice or you could see what are the examples that we use fine moving on let us talk about property so any why? yes so why we have named it as control volume because it is a volume in 2d you are looking at a square but it is actually a volume and no so why we have name is control control is that this is the mass that we are uh, talking it is just a convention so for example if you go to yeah so this is called control mass okay because we have this mass under control okay. okay now here i just have the volume under control if i define a region so suppose this is my control vo volume so i have this volume under control i don't have any control over what is the heat or mass that is coming or going out similarly for here i have just this volume which is under my control i have defined this volume so i don't have any control whether how much mass will enter or go out is it clear now okay sir moving on let us talk about uh, property so any characteristic of a system is called property for example you can uh, use mass density pressure temperature volume these are all system properties this is what is used to define a system when someone ask you if you have a system how you will define you will say i have 5 kilograms of nitrogen at 10 atmosphere or some temperature so these are the properties which are used to define a system okay now there are two types of properties that we will see 
whether it could be intensive or extensive so let us define what are these so any property which is independent of mass of the system okay that is called intensive so for example pressure temperature density so when we say that the temperature of this room is 27 degrees celsius so if you take a smaller box or if you have bigger room the temperature will not change or if you have a system you divide it into half the temperature will not change temperature will remain constant whereas for extensive property they depend on mass or extent of the system okay so if you take a system which is of 2 kg you divide it into 2 the each of these become half so for example mass or volume so which depends on extent or mass is called extensive which which is independent of mass is called intensive is this uh, clear to everyone yes sir yes sir fine moving on so uh, one more uh, type is specific so if i take per unit mass of any extensive property that becomes specific and that could also be termed as intensive so if i talk about specific volume which is volume per unit mass okay so i will say meter cube per kilogram that is a specific property and that is also an intensive it becomes intensive okay now let us talk about equilibrium so basically there are four types of equilibrium it could be mechanical thermal phase or chemical so what what do you basically mean by equilibrium so when i say that the system is under mechanical equilibrium what it means is that there are no unbalanced forces there will be forces because of the pressure some gas will be exerting some amount of force through the piston piston will be someone is putting some weight or some force is applied so that the piston stays on its place so as long as all the forces are balanced we, we say that this is mechanical equilibrium please, please understand that when i mean equilibrium it doesn't mean that there is no forces there are different types of forces or different uh, uh, for example thermal gradient but they all are balanced okay so that is the meaning of equilibrium so mechanical means all forces are balanced similarly thermal means all temperatures are same there is no temperature gradient okay if you have temperature gradient you will have no uh, temperature moving from here to here that is what we don't want thermal equilibrium means your all your uh, objects or all your systems which are you are considering they are under thermal equilibrium or they have same temperature for example if i take an uh, hot iron block i keep it in a room it is not under thermal equilibrium when it cools down it comes to the room temperature then i will say that this is under thermal equilibrium so for this we need our uh, system and surrounding to be at the same temperature that is the meaning of thermal equilibrium so now we'll uh, briefly talk about phase and chemical equilibrium so phase means that uh, there could be more than one phases but the mass of each phase is constant so there could be for example you have a case where water is evaporating and some part is condensing but they should be under equilibrium forward and back backward reaction should be balanced so we'll anyway talk more about phase when we we have chapter on phase so we'll talk more about that time chemical will not mostly deal with but you should just know what is a chemical equilibrium so for example you have two reactions one is forward and one is backward both are balanced such that the total concentration of each species is maintained constant with time it is not changing with time so in such case we say that we have chemical equilibrium okay so this 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 is anyway will not mostly talk about in this subject phase we have another chapter these are the two important uh, equilibrium that you should be very clear with so mechanical means no unbalanced force thermal means no temperature gradient everything is at same temperature then we call thermal equilibrium any uh, question of this equilibrium 
sir what is temperature gradient uh, that will come to so for example if you have uh, t1 and let me let us say that there is a dt by dx temperature is varying with respect to distance that should not happen so if i say my system and surrounding is at same temperature then there is no temperature difference let me put it this way there is no temperature difference there is no delta t all the bodies are at the same temperature then i call thermal equilibrium is it clear now yes sir fine moving on so uh, now we'll define a state okay so state could be a state of properties that completely describe the condition of a system okay now let us see what a system is so let us take the most common or basic example of a piston cylinder arrangement so what what are the things i should know so let us say i know that this is at one atmosphere and this is the specific volume as i told volume per unit mass so this is 1 meter cube per kg or 1 kg of this gas or whatever is there it occupies 1 meter cube at the given conditions okay so i know these two properties are they enough so if i know pressure and volume are they enough to describe the system or i need more properties i need to find the temperature density so whether using these two i can calculate all other properties or i need more properties to do so that is the question how do we fix a state so it should not be ambiguous if i know these two i can calculate all that or i need more properties to be sure of what is the state to fix the state what is the number of properties i need to fix such that i fix the state of the system okay is this uh, clear yes sir fine now let us uh, look at how many properties are required okay whether two are enough or more are required that we'll see so we'll briefly talk about gibbs phase rule okay so i'll not go into much detail because uh, this will be covered in a later chapter okay then i'll talk about more detail but you should just uh, look at the basic form of this equation so it says it is a simple equation f is equal to c minus p plus 2 now what are these symbols for f is basically your degrees of freedom okay it tells you what are the number of properties that are required to fix the state of system so let us say 2 or 3 if i know two properties i know that this is my system okay if i know these two properties i will be able to calculate all other properties so these are the properties that are required to fix the state that is called f c is the number of components so we will talk about it later in the next chapter number of phases okay now let us apply this for our simple system so here we have component is 1 phase is also 1 so f becomes 2 so what it says is that a state of a simple compressible system it is a simple compressible system there is no different phases there is only one component and it is compressible so a state of this system can be specified by two independent intensive properties okay so what it means is that if i know the pressure and let us say pressure and temperature or pressure or volume i can calculate all other properties it becomes fixed the state of the system becomes fixed if i know two properties that's it it will not be fixed if i know only one if i say that i have pressure of an atmosphere then the system is not fixed it could have any temperature it could have any volume but if i say pressure is this and volume is this then i am also fixing the temperature i am also fixing the density okay is this point clear or any doubt please ask me now so it is written over here the intensive properties so the volume yes. is the intensive property no this is uh, specific volume if i put okay. p then i also need mass okay so if i if in, instead of intensive 
I am providing extensive properties, then I also need to tell how much mass is there. But if I am using this is specific column which is intensive. Okay. Fine. Okay. Sir. We yes. Sir, in order to calculate the temperature, we should also have to know the molar mass of the gas inside it. So, sir, then we have to so, uh, calculate three properties. Yes, sir. Okay, uh, yes, we'll come to that. When we know pressure and if I know V, then that is also fixed. Oh, you are talking about molar mass. Then we, we can use R, R for that particular gas. You will see in the examples to come. Fine. Sir, yes. uh, sir, how C component is equal to 1? So, uh, there is only one component. That's what uh, we'll go to the next chapter to, for example, if I had, let us say, air and water mixture. So, I'll say 2. Now, I'm talking okay. three, one gas is there or air is there. Fine. Okay, sir. So, uh, let us uh, look how this is defined. So, if I no true properties. Let us say I know pressure and volume. How do I define? And uh, we also talk about process and path. Okay, I need to wind up in uh, about 5-10 minutes now. So let us uh, try to look at this quickly. So I have a piston cylinder arrangement where I know the these two properties. I know pressure, I know volume. And this is again specific volume. Small v is for specific. If I start uh, writing large V, that is for extensive volume. This is for, again, specific volume. So I have a piston cylinder arrangement at P1 and V1. I compressed it slowly. We'll see what slowly means. So if I compress it slowly and I bring it to P2 and V2, right? Now let us see how can we plot this in a PV plot. So let us define two coordinates. X is V and Y is P. So the first, this is a state. This is state 1, this is state 2. They are different states, right? So state 1, I can plot it like this, which is my initial state. I can say that P1 in the P axis, V1 in the V axis, that fixes my state. Now once I know my state, it means I know all my parameters. I can calculate other density, temperature, whatever is required. I can calculate for this state. That is the meaning of fixing a state. So now I uh, know these two properties. I have fixed the state. This is one, my initial state. Now I need to move to two, which is my final state. Again, I took the coordinates P2, V2, and I plotted two. Now the process is how I move from one to two. And there will be a step of equilibriums those will take me from 1 to 2 that is called the path okay now let us uh, in the next slide we'll define these terms but any any uh, question on this i'm taking the system from 1 to 2 using this path is this clear to everyone yes, yes sir. sir yes sir fine now let us uh, define this so any change that a system undergoes from one equilibrium state to another is called process. So moving from 1 to 2 is a process. So I can have any property defined here. Last slide I used pressure and volume. I could have pressure or temperature. Any property A and B. Two properties I need to define. Now I'm starting from state 1. I need to go to state 2. So the change that a system goes from 1 to 2 that is called a process. And the path that it takes or the series of states through which a system passes during the process is called path of the process. Okay, so this is the path. Path could be like this, path could be like this, path could be any arbitrary shape. That we need to be clear. Okay, whatever path you take, that will determine your, let us say, work, it will determine your heat transfer. What are the other, uh, how the system behaves? That we need to define. What is the path we are taking through? We are taking through this or we are taking through this. That has to be defined. Now, yes, any uh, question here? Sir? Yes. 
all the three path will have the same process or different process process is same path is different so are going from 1 to 2 so the process is same okay, okay. but we are going through different paths thank you sir okay let us uh, see uh, okay is this clear to everyone any question uh, please ask because uh, these are the very basic uh, uh, topics of your subject everybody is clear with this yes sir fine i will let me suggest that uh, i will upload the slides you go through these slides if any doubt uh, wednesday we can discuss right so let us uh, talk about quasi static process okay so when we talk about this path when we say that the system is going from here to here we assume that all the points what are shown here are under equilibrium okay it could not be you cannot uh, for example compress this crystal very fast you have to do it very very slowly such that all the points here are in equilibrium state okay if you do it very fast or you release it very fast then it is not be in equilibrium but for our study we will assume that we do it very slowly such that it always is under equilibrium or near equilibrium that is what we will define now so we uh, will talk about quasi static process so when we say that the process produce uh, process proceeds very slowly in such a manner that system remains very close infinitely similarly close to equilibrium state at all times it is called quasi static or quasi equilibrium process so basically even if you not at equilibrium you are very close to equilibrium okay so we can say that it is sufficiently slow such that the system adjusted itself if you push a piston okay there will be some uh, changes inside so that has to be uniformly adjusted what it says is that property in one part of the system do not change any faster than those of other parts that will happen if you push piston really really slow actually you need to push it infinitely slow you should take infinite time to go from point 1 to point 2 but so this should be done at infinite time but we don't have time to do infinitely so we'll stick with okay if it is slow enough it is called quasi static you are very close to equilibrium even if you have not achieved equilibrium if you are very close and for practical purpose i can say that okay we are under equilibrium then we will say that it is a quasi static process and when i define a path like this i assume that if it is a solid line it is a quasi static if it is a dotted line then it is not quasi static okay so if it is a non equilibrium process then i don't know if you are following this path or you are following this path that i don't know if i am showing a path like this it means there are different equilibrium states at each of this point each of this point correspond to equilibrium states so i am slowly slowly pushing the piston is this a clear to everyone yes sir what is a quasi static process sir is quasi static path is same as the reversible process reversible will come to that but if it is reversible it has to be quasi static let me put it this okay. way right so again i repeat basically if i am telling quasi static it means that we have taken really slowly all these points are all equilibrium states okay i have pushed the piston slowly from one point to other that is how i am taking it along while for this i don't care i just put it push it quickly so it could be like this it could be only thing is it is reaching from point 1 to point 2 that is what that matters to me so i pushed it or i released it very fast so okay. sir if a process is quasi static it is not necessary that it will be reversible 
Yes, the reversible will come to reversible is a reversible and irreversible is a chapter for you. Don't don't go into that. Just focus on causal state. Okay, let me give you an example. Let us say that there is a piston. Okay, now if I start to heat, if I provide heat here, this part will get heated up first, right? So this will be heated. It will be at higher temperature than this. This part. Let us just say. Now I do it really slowly. I just provide a very small amount of heat such that this and this are almost at the same temperature. That is called quasi static. If I provide a large amount of heat, suddenly this this region will become very hot. This will be cold. That is non quasi static. Anything you have to do really really slow. That is called quasi static. Is this clear to everyone? Yes, sir. This this is a very important topic. Uh, everyone should be fine. So let us. Uh, Stop for here for today. I will uh, upload these slides and uh, tomorrow anyway. Don't have class. Wednesday we will discuss. Fine. I will suggest you just go through this uh, video and uh, these slides. So it should be uh, very clear in that. Fine. Sir, we need to make notes personally. No, no. You will see. You will get this lecture slides. I will upload. You will get the video. So let me just share uh, my screen. Okay, we will uh, get this uh, lecture slides. I will also upload the video, so you can look at the video whenever you want, and you can also uh, look at these are the lecture slides will be available to you. If you want to write something or make notes, that is up to you. You can uh, do it. I'm not stopping you from making notes, but these slides will be available to you. That's what I'm saying. Is it okay. fine? so let me uh, stop recording otherwise it will